Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most famous weightlifters of all time was just popped for the use of EPO. The ITA notifies Chinese weightlifter Lu Zhaozhen of an apparent anti-doping rule violation. The ITA reports that a sample collected during an out-of-competition testing mission on the 30th of October 2022 from Lu Zhaozhen, a weightlifter from China, has returned an adverse analytical finding for the prohibited peptide hormone, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this, but it is EPO. EPO is prohibited under the 2022 WADA prohibited list as a peptide hormone. EPO stimulates, again, not going to try and pronounce that, red blood cell production and can modify the body's capacity to transport oxygen and therefore increase stamina and performance. EPO is prohibited at all times. This means in and out of competition. It is used for medical purposes in the treatment of anemia and chronic kidney disease, anemia in mild dysplasia and anemia from cancer chemotherapy. This is a big one and, and for many reasons and, and I want to I want to you know go through each one of these reasons but I think it's a big one because Lu Zhaozhen his name recognition he might be the most recognizable name in weightlifting and I would venture to say of all time and the reason for that is because he is the most recognized name or at least one of them, I would say probably the most recognized name in the internet era. This is where we can have kind of debate on what it means to be the most famous weightlifter or whatever. But the reasoning for that and the reason why I think it's such a big deal is because the viralization of weightlifting around the planet has become, you know, ridiculous ever since social media and, and YouTube has taken off. I know as a prevalent YouTuber in the weightlifting space, Lu Zhaozhen, Dmitry Klokov, Ilya Ilyin, names like that, those are the names that I was focusing on because they were currently lifting while I was starting my YouTube channel. And there's a lot of people around the globe who feel the same way. Weightlifting is being exposed to more people than it ever has before. And these are the names involved. Lu Zhaozhen being the top and then to have him be popped, this is why this is a big deal. Now, those names I have mentioned before, and this is uh, uh, another reason why this is so big. Ilya Ilyin, Dmitry Klokov, let's say Lasha Talchadze, and then on the women's side, Laura Donatoma. They have all been popped for performance-enhancing drug use. Those are the biggest names in weightlifting. And again, at least in this internet era, and I explained to you why this era is probably more determinant of what's the bigger uh, name or, or who's going to have the bigger name. We could go back in history and think, you know, Vasily Alexeyev, Anatoly Pisarenko, Pocket Hercules, or Naim Solimanoglu, even Piros Dimas. Those were really big names then, but there weren't as many eyes on weightlifting then. So it's hard for me to think of another sport where the biggest names, current and some former, but basically current biggest names are, have all been popped for steroid use. The only other sport that comes close to mind is the steroid era of baseball. Now look, I'm gonna give everyone time to comment below, basically saying everyone's on steroids and we should just let everyone do steroids. So go ahead and comment that down below. There we go. Look, I understand that take, I do. But I think I've seen it so many times and a lot of times it just comes from people just being frustrated with the concept of anti-doping and how it's so much bigger of a mission than the, the big anti-doping advocates have imagined. I'm gonna explain really the only way that we know or could know that anti-doping could work and why it's pretty much an impossibility to have occur. First things first, Lu Zhaozhen was popped because of a ITA and quote unquote testing mission, okay? This means <laughs> WADA parachuted in an ITA, uh, you know, agent and he probably snuck in. I'm not, okay, didn't parachute in, but got into the country somehow, you know, with some visa for some other thing. Definitely didn't mention that it was a testing agent or it could have come from within the country, but... That likelihood is very small, and I'll explain that later. This, this person comes in to do a mission, 
to essentially surprise Lu Zhaozhen, to surprise uh, the Chinese weightlifting team to then collect a sample. This is and will prove to be the only way that you could catch a team like China uh, unless they mess up substantially uh, in, in uh, competition testing. This is the only way that you could catch them. So what do I mean by that? There is national testing from nation to nation. And what you're supposed to do is test your own athletes, um, you know, pretty rig rigorously in the U.S. And this is in weightlifting, okay? Because I know this very well. Once you are in the testing pool in the U.S., you are likely to be tested at your house randomly, whenever, literally whenever, 365 days a year, you provide them a testing window so they can come in at that hour uh, and you can't miss this opportunity when they come to the door, you have to piss. You, usually they're going to take blood as well. Does that allow for the potential of drug use? Of course, but it's much more difficult. Furthermore, that that uh, agency, USADA, they have no loyalty to the NGB of weightlifting, which is USA Weightlifting. So this means like, say that they were able, they had an adverse analytical finding of a American weightlifter. There is no protection of that weightlifter. That dude is getting popped. That dude or chick is getting popped. And then they're not going to be able to compete. Now, the likelihood that that happens in China, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say 0%. 0% chance that there is a testing organization within China that would show up randomly, test Lu Zhaozhen, and then China would report that to the IWF, the International Weightlifting Federation, so that one of their athletes could be sanctioned and they could face some sort of sanction as a country. China would be the last place on earth to do that to themselves as a representative of themselves in, in international sport, okay? Now, this is not some sort of supremacy thing. Again, I always have to say this uh, because there's so many people that don't understand. This is objective fact. This might be one of the reasons, might not be, but this is the way it is in American weightlifting. This is exactly how it is. I, I don't know how to display it any other way. So I know I went off on a little tangent there, but because the disparity of national testing is so great, international testing needs to be cutthroat. They need to send ITA agents all over the place all the time to try and get people because international testing, as far as like people going to competitions and testing at the competition, that's so easy to get around, at least for the Chinese who are incredibly smart. They have inc so much amount of money. Um, they're incredibly gifted around like their systems and organization. They never had an issue with this whatsoever. They've, you know, I, I talked about this with Derek from More Plates, More Dates on my podcast. And we discussed like, look, the Chinese like never get popped. And the window to get popped for EPO is like something like three days. I've heard at the top end, it's seven days. So after seven days, it's pretty much clear from your system. This means they surprised Liu Zhaozhen. They surprised the uh, Chinese Weightlifting Federation. Surprise, mother... That is really the only way to do that, to, to make sure that you have somewhat of a clean sport. It's not possible to do that. There are so many countries that have... Uh, pretty big weightlifting teams that we would have to send ITA agents to all the time. Like that's just, that's not happening. There's not enough money uh, in WADA to be able to fund something like that. So that can happen. The next thing that would have to occur uh, would be loss in results. Yes, you would see, just like in baseball, a lot less home runs being hit. Now there are some other reasons as to why there are less home runs. I've heard about corked balls or or the fact that the balls were juiced that's what they called them the balls back when they were hitting home runs a lot in the steroid era anyways i digress we have seen since 1972 when we got rid of the clean and press these countries have been dialing in their methodologies and their technique to snatch the most possible weight and clean and jerk the most possible weight. Very quickly, a cursory overview of this, which was mentioned in Laputin and Aleshko's Managing of the Training of Weightlifters. It's a great book. I read it front to back. I've read it a bunch of times. You saw because of the importance of the press, a lot more pressing focused training. Weightlifters were, you know, pressing very close 
you know, relatively to their best jerk. Uh, and now, since we've abolished the clean and press since 1972, we have focused so much more on the technique of the jerk and the technical skill of the jerk, developing the legs much more than developing the upper body. Uh, speed has become much more important in, in things like the jerk. And now you see lifters, you know, clean and jerking more weight than they did in that previous era and definitely snatching more weight. Lasha Talhadze is a great example of this. If you compare him to Vasily Alexeyev, Vasily Alexeyev was pressing in the 500 pounds all the time. I don't think Lasha could press over 400 pounds. Maybe, probably could strict press right around 400 pounds, but it doesn't matter because the guy's damn near jerking 600 pounds uh, over 267 kilos, I think is his world record clean and jerk. So we have found the mountaintop as far as drugged up weightlifting goes. I think maybe there we can keep creeping along, but if those numbers are to continue to keep going higher and higher, we know that those athletes are going to be on drugs, okay? So the only way that we would be able to understand that this sport is cleaning up is the loss of results. Now, that sounds shitty, and it kind of is. Everyone just wants to see the most weight lifted, uh, you know, possible. It doesn't matter to them. They just want to see the most weight lifted possible. That's that's awesome. It's kind of, it's true. I, I can't take that away. But the competitive nature of weightlifting is really, really fun. Whether the athletes uh, are snatching from 150 to 160, uh, or if they're juiced up and they're snatching 180 to 190, the competition, the closeness, the, the movements in the back room, the, you know, the mental battle between weightlifters, that's an amazing thing to watch. So, in essence, loss of results is not the the end of the world, okay? But really, those are the only two options, and I don't see any of those happening. That was a long-winded way of saying it's pretty much an impossibility to make this sport clean. And I just want to close this up by talking about weightlifting as a sport and, and the major players in it. You know, Dmitry Klokov, retroactively banned. Like, we, we thought he was one of the guys that wasn't going to be popped or might have gotten away with never having a, a adverse finding popped. Ilya Ilyan went a long time without getting popped and then he got popped twice. Lasha Talhadze popped as a junior. People don't realize this. He was popped and then he only got better. Laura Donatoma, one of the most famous women's weightlifters, was popped as a junior and only got better. This sport as it exists right now cannot exist without drugs. It can't. And the only way to solve it are through methods which are impossible. We bit off more than we can chew as far as controlling the drug use. And I don't really know what the answer is. I would love to see what you guys think in the comments section. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. <music>